Good news for the glass half empty set. It can pay to be pessimistic. We're talking about defensive pessimism, a strategy where people set low expectations in order to avoid an anxiety provoking event. And this has been shown to help people. WSJ health reporter Sumathi Reddy and Dr. Dalip J. Stay, a psychiatric professor at UC San Diego joins us now. Sumathi, what are the different types? of so, pessimists and optimists. Yeah, so it's really interesting. There's like three or four different types of um, pessimists and optimists. The main one, the sort of half glass full, half empty, that's your dispositional or trait pessimism. Then you have explanatory pessimism, which is like something bad happens to you and you sort of blame yourself for it. Mm -hmm. And then you have defensive pessimism, which you mentioned, and that's sort of a way to manage your anxiety when something, when you're preparing for something that you're nervous about. Okay, uh, Dr. J say there are reams and decades of evidence that support the concept of positive psychology that optimism results in better health outcomes. But you're saying that pessimism um, in this pessimistic perspective can really help in group decision making. Explain that. Yes. Optimism is usually good for building one's confidence, improving well-being, and even improving physical health as well as potentially the lifespan. However, excessive or overconfidence can create problems. It may produce feelings of invincibility hmm. and that would result in unnecessary risk taking. For example, teenagers or young adults may start smoking, drinking, using substances or uh, encounter serious things such as catching a running train which can result in injury or even death. Okay. In older adults, excessive optimism can lead to entering some high-risk deals, which ultimately become difficult for the older adult to carry on. I found that this is particularly helpful when you're wanting to make sure you don't set deadlines that are too ambitious or unrealistic. Is this one example? Yes, that is one example. Another example would be when a group makes a decision it is sure about the reception it will have on the other side. For example, our group said, decides to submit a large grant and we expect that the grant reviewers will like it. We have to be prepared that no, that may not happen. The other side may not like it, so we have to think about what can we do if they don't. Okay, so Sumathi, on the spectrum of optimism versus pessimism, most people kind of fall in the middle. Can pessimism be taught if you're really an optimistic person? I don't think pessimism can be taught, but defensive pessimism, which is a strategy, mm -hmm. that can be sort of taught. So if you're nervous about public speaking, for example, you can go through all the possible negative things that are going to happen before you speak. The water is going to spill on you, the microphone is going to break down, and sort of do things to prevent that, and that, that could help you. Do, do you think that optimism can actually be a disadvantage in stressful conditions? There was a very interesting study um, from 2011 that did show that couples that were overly optimistic when they dealt with very stressful conditions in the long term, they were not able to cope with that stress and they actually were more depressed than people who were more realistic about themselves. Okay, what is a strategic optimist? That really caught my eye. So that's interesting. That's like, that's the opposite of the defensive pessimist. So that's the person who something potentially stressful they're facing, they kind of blow it off, they don't dwell on it, they don't think about it, they hope for the best and they figure, you know, everything's going to work out fine. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, last question to you, Dr. Jesse. How do you apply this to your own life and your career? Well, in my own life, uh, I'm a sports fan and I'm a fan of San Diego Chargers. In the beginning, I would expect them to win all their games and then I found out that I was actually unhappy at least half of the time. Now, I expect that they will have a tough match and they may not win. So that way, when they win, I'm happy. If they lose, it was something I was expecting, so I don't feel too unhappy. <laughs> My professional career, this happens when I submit papers or grants. I am hoping that they would be accepted, but I'm prepared for the worst, that they may not be accepted. And that helps me to feel happy when they do get accepted. <laughs> too down, down uh, too disheartened when uh, the grants are not accepted. All right, Sumathi and Dr. J. Say, thank you very much. Fascinating information. We thank you.